Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first part of a series of videos on how to use the Corpus of Contemporary American English, or COCA, to improve your academic writing. My name is Andrew Davis, and I'm an instructor of graduate level academic English at Duke University's Department of English for International Students. Now, in these series of videos, we will explore how to use COCA as a unique reference tool to discover and implement academic and formal English writing conventions. So uh, here's what we will talk about. Um, I want to first uh, talk about what is a corpus and how can it improve your writing. Uh, I then will introduce specifically the Corpus of Contemporary American English, or you will hear me refer to it here on as COCA, and how you can access this. And then we will uh, go through uh, the user interface and some of the search options that are available for you. Uh, but before we begin, uh, I, I think I need to answer uh, a few questions for everybody out there. Uh, the first question is, what is a corpus? Well, a corpus is a large database of naturally occurring or authentic language, and it's uh, used in a particular context. So by searching through this database, uh, we can then learn uh, different aspects of language use, such as vocabulary, grammar, uh, and different language conventions or unspoken rules that are used in a specific writing context. We can also learn about different variation in these language contexts. So in other words, we can see differences of language used among, say, writing in popular magazines versus writing for a more formal academic context, or even compare spoken and written language as well. Um, so the next question is, how can this help you with your writing? Well, COCA can and should be used as a type of reference tool, just like you would use a dictionary or a thesaurus. But a corpus is going to show you some detailed and nuanced information that sometimes a dictionary is just not going to be able to show you. Uh, this is going to help you learn different writing conventions that are very specific to your context of academic writing and perhaps even your specific academic discipline within uh, a larger uh, academic context. So the third question I want to answer is, what is COCA? Uh, the Corpus of Contemporary American English, or COCA, is a database of over one billion words of authentic language from eight different genres or contexts. So these genres are spoken English, fiction, newspapers, popular magazines, academic writing, TV and movie subtitles, blogs, and then other web pages. Uh, the database is completely searchable. So you can look up individual words, multi-word phrases, and different grammatical forms even, and parts of speech. We can then start to see patterns of use and compare these across different genres. And this allows us to see exactly how language is used in a particular context so that we can match our own writing to meet the conventions of the language use of the particular context that we are writing for. So next I want to cover how to uh, sign in and register an account with uh, the corpus that we will use. So the first thing that you will do is visit this link here. Uh, go ahead and pause if you need to uh, copy the link. I've also provided the QR code that will take you directly to this page. Now, once you have reached this page, this is what you should see. So this is the Duke University Libraries page, uh, englishcorpora.org. You will click on the View Online button and you will see a place to put in your net ID and password. So I'm going to go ahead and do that myself. And this is the link, uh, the, the total site. You can see there are multiple corpora listed here. We only want to use one, and that's the Corpus of Contemporary American English right here. So I'm going to click on this link here. 
Now you can see that you can start searching. However, if you do not register, uh, it's going to tell you, it's going to give you some warning signs to register after 10 or 15 searches. So we're going to want to go ahead and create an account. Uh, and it should only take a few minutes, uh, but in the, on the website, you will see in the upper right corner, uh, like a photo frame uh, in yellow. So we're going to click on that and we're going to further click on the register button right down here. And all you really need to do is fill in this information. When it comes to your email address, please, I would recommend you to use your Duke affiliated email address. Uh, Duke has a license to use this product and you should not be bothered by needing to pay or to register after using your Duke uh, email address. And please remember uh, the format of the Duke email address because that will be your login information as well. So name, address, password, country, and then most of you uh, uh, you know, check which one applies. Most of you, if this is for an EIS class, you will most likely choose graduate student, not languages or linguistics. Once you submit that, you will receive a link. There might be one more thing you will need to do in your profile. Uh, sometimes you need to do this, sometimes you don't. And that is to make sure in your profile, there's a section that says institution, and you will want to choose Duke University as your institution, just to make sure that uh, you are locked into the Duke University uh, license for this service. Okay, so uh, the next thing I want to do here is I want to just walk you through um, some of the search uh, options and the uh, user interface here. Further videos, we will go into more depth on these search functions. So if you're curious about them, you can go ahead and explore on your own, but you can also look up uh, videos uh, that will show you exactly how to um, use these different search items. So up above here, you will see that there's this little uh, plus sign right here. And so if you click on this plus sign, this will expand your search categories. And you can see all of these different options are different ways to search the corpus. And uh, we will uh, go through those, like I said, in other videos. So first we have list, which just lists any instances of uh, a word or search term. We have chart that will show a comparison chart among different uh, genres of language. We have Word, which will give us a, um, a full definition and information on individual vocabulary words in the corpus. Um, we have Browse, which just lets you show a random word. Uh, Collocates, which will show you uh, frequently paired vocabulary words that uh, commonly occur together. We will discuss this later if you don't understand exactly what I mean. Uh, we have Compare, which allows us to compare the usage of two uh, words. And then we have this other term, KWIC. Uh, you will hear me call this QUIC. This stands for Key Word in Context. And uh, I will describe, uh, like I said, in further videos how to use that word as well. So you see here, here is a search bar, um, and we can do a lot of different things here. So we can search um, words in here. Uh, we can also, you see this little POS, we can actually identify parts of speech that we want to search for as well. So we can search for just all the nouns. That would take quite a while to search. Uh, we can search for all of the verbs. Um, um, we can search for um, prepositions that commonly occur after certain verbs. We can do a lot of different things here with this part of speech uh, search that we will get into in more detail. Uh, down below here, we have this sections, and this is going to be uh, fairly important for us moving forward. Uh, like I said, uh, the corpus of contemporary American English uh, has eight different sections, subgenres of corpora. Sometimes we don't need to search for all of those sections. So if we click on this sections, and you see on this first column here, uh, you can see all of the different uh, genres that I was speaking of, TV and movies, blog, web, general websites, spoken English, 
fiction, magazines, newspapers, and academic. So we can uh, search for different uh, different details in these different uh, subgenres of corpus by just selecting one. You could also search multiple uh, subgenres of the corpus by holding down either the command key on a Mac or the control key on Windows, and now you can select multiple um, multiple corpora to search at one time. So maybe you want to search academic and newspaper, for example, or you want to compare TV movie subtitles with uh, information you might find on the web. So there's just a lot of different search options here. And um, like I said, uh, we will go through these search options in greater detail in the following videos. Um, but with that, uh, that will uh, do it for this first video for today. So uh, thank you very much for, for listening. And uh, we will, um, I'm excited to share more information in the next videos. Thank you very much.